Hi, everybody. It's Mike from Here the Watchman, and uh, coming at you today. It's a beautiful day up in the mountains of Idaho, and uh, we are looking forward now to the Long Island Intensive Spiritual Warfare Training Workshop. It's coming up at the end of the month, uh, May 31st through June 2nd, at the Hyatt Regency in Long Island. And today we have one of the participants, one of the guys that's actually going to be teaching because this conference is all about teaching, not preaching. And uh, we're going to get into it. We're going to really get into the thick of it. If you can't make it there, do sign up for our live stream on demand package. Just go to hear the watchmen, men.com. Use the code TOM, promotional code TOM, and you will get $10 off the purchase price of the live stream on demand package. Tom, Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, you've got a fantastic, fantastic topic that you're going to uh, be teaching on, uh, which is near and dear to my heart and a lot of us. It's domestic spiritual warfare. Talk to us about that. Well, Mike, it's good to see you again. <laughs> and um, I'll talk to you about as much as I can. I haven't worked it all out yet. It's a, it's a work in progress. But it's something that I have experience with, and I'm going to be glad to talk about it. Domestic spiritual warfare, what does that mean? Okay, um, the Bible says if you marry, you will have trouble, right? So that's not I – don't, I don't want to discourage anybody from getting married, but there are things that go along with that. Okay, if you can, if you can overcome the flesh and you can overcome the world, then there's another – thing that we need to overcome, which is spiritual warfare, right? So uh, what I say for people that come to me for marriage counseling or whatever is you may not like this, but you know, you might need, you, you might be the problem. Okay. And the, the devil is good at manipulating people, in, you know, in the flesh. So uh, a lot, you know, sometimes we do a lot of the work for the devil. Okay. And what I mean by that is um, I don't need his help, okay? Uh, a, a lot of the times my response or what I do causes a lot of problems, and the enemy loves to manipulate that. You know, you have people like um, like Russ Dizdar, myself, and many others. I don't care who you are. If you are L.A. Marzulli, if you are Josh Peck, you have domestic spiritual warfare, okay? The enemy is going to attack you. Uh, maybe not out on the field, he's going to attack you at your home, okay? Because if he can get to me, if he can get to my kids, if he can get to my wife, then he can make me ineffective out on the battlefield. The people that are showing up in New York that are signing up for this conference, they, they want to be involved. They want to be boots on the ground. Well, you know what? If, if the enemy is attacking you at your, um, at your home base, that is going to affect your boots on the ground. How do you fortify your um, your headquarters? How do you protect yourself against this? How do you defend your home against spiritual warfare? You know, um, I know a lot of people that have been taking that have been taken off the field because of what's happened at home. This is what I'm going to talk about, and this is this is what I've experienced. I've been out there by the uh, by the uh, grace of God to be able to be there with Russ Dizdar and you know everybody knows what he does and the, and the crazy things that he's get, gotten into I've seen it firsthand and what people may not realize is the behind the, the behind the scenes stories the things that happen everybody asks how do you do what you do well there's a lot more to it than just what you see out there on the field. A lot of what we do, we do in private. We do in our prayer closet. We do getting ready, reading God's word. We do, you know, people see me on a video like this or see me in New York or see me wherever. They're like, I want to do what you do. You don't know what I do. Okay. And I'm going to tell you what I do to get ready for those things. So um, th there's a lot that goes into it. You know, we want to train people to going out there and doing deliverance. And Russ is going to talk about a lot of that, but how do you defend your home? How do you how do you deal with um, with rebellion in the home with a, you know with a teenager or you know what's what's the difference between a, a physical flesh problem and a spiritual problem you know those are a lot of the things I'm going to talk about and I'm going to use my experience and 
I, you know, my first go around, a lot of these things caught me off guard. I always tell people that um, when I, and a lot of this came about because of uh, my filmmaking. I made a film about what Russ does, uh, Detestable, and I tell people, okay, I was ready. You know, I was looking straight ahead, and the enemy came in this way. He came in from the side. I wasn't ready for that. And I want, I want to try and share as much experience with you as possible uh, to for when you do get attacked. Jesus said to Peter, he said, uh, Simon, Simon, I have prayed for you, you know, that your faith would not fail. Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, okay? Now, I, you know, the thing that stands out to me in that scripture is like, why didn't Jesus pray that it wouldn't happen, okay? Why didn't Jesus pray for Peter that, Peter wouldn't be sifted as wheat because we're going to be sifted as wheat. We're going to be attacked. And he prayed for his, that his faith would not fail. So there's so many things that, that go into what we do and, um, and, and the warfare, the boots on the ground that, it, that people don't see. And that's, you know, I'm kind of babbling here, Mike, but I, I just, I cannot stress the importance of, of fortifying your home, your, your, your uh, headquarters and um there, there, there's so much more to it than just going out and fighting the devil the devil brings the fight to you and you got to be ready for that well you know tom you're 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 deadly accurate with this i mean Jeannie and i go through this constantly uh with what we're when when we're doing the conferences and putting uh, putting things together the enemy always attacks you at home because as you said mm -hmm. he can keep you off the playing field uh and make you ineffective uh, on the playing field. But I think that a lot of couples uh, forget. They forget that the Bible tells us that if we marry, we'll face trouble. You know, I mean, uh, and, and think about that. I mean, that was written before marriage became an institution, before it was, back then it used to be between God, a man, and a woman, not God, a man, and a woman, uh, and the federal government and the county government uh, you know, and, and right. there was a marriage license. So it, it was going on way before we got our myths in it like we do uh, in today's world. Uh, but, you know, it's it's hard because I think, uh, you know, when people think about uh, spiritual warfare, I, I think they have the exact view that you had when you were doing Detestable, that if I just look forward, I can watch out and I can be ready for these attacks. But they come in from the side, and that's why it's that's why it's so important for uh, folks to, to to learn and to learn from uh, your experience. Uh, I think that uh, when you're when you're teaching this class, you're going to be talking a lot about your personal experience, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am, and you know, I hope. I a lot of times people can't learn unless they experience it themselves. But come on, guys, we got to learn something from somebody else, right? You know, we always try to teach our kids, you know, like we, we can see things coming a mile away from our kids. And I'm like to my son, I'm like, son, you're probably going to learn the hard way. But if you can hear anything I have to say, you know, you don't got to learn always the hard way, right? You can, you've got to be able to get one of these things. And, but that's okay, you know? This teaching is so important because it could be for you, but it might be for somebody close to you. And that's what happens so many times is when I'm learning something, something pops up within that week where I'm like, oh, I can apply this here to this person or I can give this to my neighbor or something. You know, so we need to be trained in all aspects. We really, really do. Our enemy is trained. Our enemy is good at what he does and he is networking, he is mobilizing, and we we are birthed on the front line. When we become a Christian, uh, we don't go to basic training. You know, when we send a soldier into war, they have basic training in the military. We don't have that. We are birthed as a Christian on the front line under, under warfare, under enemy fire. And we have to train as we go. And churches are not offering this training. The training in New York, you're not going to get it at your church. I promise you, nothing against your pastor, but he's not going to teach you what you're going to learn up there. And, okay, so so a lot of this, this stuff that we're going to talk about, it's out there. It's in books. You know, Russ Dizar has written books and stuff. We are offering ourselves, we're making ourselves available that weekend to, to mentor, to counsel, to pray, to, again, you know, make it 
be transparent in a way that we may not be in, in other situations. We really are. And yeah, I, I'm offering my own experience. I tell you what, I didn't go I didn't go through the stuff that I've been through in the last two or three years for nothing. Uh, I want to share. I want to warn other people, you know, and if I can say, hey, you know, the road's out. Don't go down this way. The road's out and we can save somebody from going off a cliff. We're going to do it, you know, and um, uh, then, you know, I mean, when I was in sales at, at, at a um, at a store, I actually used to work at Best Buy years ago. They had this thing called the virtuous teaching cycle. And the idea was when you learn something, teach it to the guy next to you. And I love that concept. And that's what we're doing. Iron sharpens iron. You know, we lift each other up. We confess our sins to one another, you know, uh, and we 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 get strong together. And that's what that's what we're going to do in New York. I, I'm, I'm just excited about this about this conference, Mike. And um, it's just going to be it's going to be different. Just like you said, it's not preaching. It's going to be teaching. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity there just for interaction. And um, it, it's just going to be a good thing. It really is. Well, and that's that's one of the things when when uh, Gene and I sat down with Russ and and talked about doing this. Uh, one of the things that really excited us was making this more of a intimate setting uh, where people can meet with you one on one now. When you're at this, at this, as opposed to conferences are tough because there's so many people, this is a smaller group, you really are going to be able to meet one-on-one -on -one with people and counsel them, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. We are going to make ourselves available. I tell you what, uh, I can speak for Russ and I. We, we stay up way past bedtime uh, talking to people, meeting with people, counseling with people. And I mean, it takes place everywhere. It takes place in the elevator. It takes place in the lobby. It just it just happens, you know. It takes place over lunch, so um, it, it, it's just it's going to be good. And Mike, I want people so bad to get this teaching and this training. The harvest is plentiful, and the workers are few. Again, you're not going to get this training from your church. And God bless your church. I'm not putting down your church, but people show up to these things for a reason, and the church is lacking in this training. And you can take this, you can take this teaching, you can take, you know, whether it's a live stream or the DVDs, and you can take it back to your Sunday school or, um, or your church or whatever, and hopefully pass it on to somebody else. And you can implement it in your own life. These things were a game changer for me. I was, I was a pupil. Now I get the opportunity to be a teacher and I, lo I love teaching people stuff. I love seeing people grab on to new things. Um, and again, going back to my job, when I worked at Best Buy, I, di I didn't like sales, but I liked training people. People would come in, and it was during a time when people were tra transitioning from film cameras to digital cameras. And people were like, a digital camera, what is that? I'm not used to that. I don't want to, you know, uh, I, I like the film. And I would explain all the reasons why the benefits of a digital camera. When you take a picture, okay, and this sounds like I'm trying to sell people a digital camera right now, but one of the examples I would use is you can see the you can see the picture right now, you know, and they were like blown away, you know? And I, so I taught them how to use digital technology. Well, we're gonna teach you how to use spiritual warfare. I had the concept for years. The church doesn't even have the concept. I had the concept for years, but I had no strategy. I had no training. I had nothing that could help me. I just had a few verses, and I had the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ is good. I plead the blood, but I, I said it in fear. I'm like, you know, I was scared of the devil. I was scared of demons. I plead the blood. I plead the blood, you know, and I was scared. No, take fear off the table. We're going we're gonna to teach all this stuff, and we want you to become warriors. We do not want you to leave the same way that you came. We want to make warriors. We want this just to be a powerful engagement in Long Island, New York. And uh, I mean, you can take this back and then it's going to this thing's going to spread like a disease. You're going to reach other people that you didn't think that you could reach and you're going to be able to do things. I'm telling you what you're, you nobody's going to be able to stop you because you're going to start looking for people to to reach, to minister to, to counsel um, it's an, I don't know. It's an amazing thing. And I, I just can't, it's, it's a few weeks away and, um, uh, I, I don't know who's going to be there. I've, a few people said, Hey Tom, I'm coming. 
and I'm looking forward to meeting them. But we, man, some 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 uh, work's going to get done in New York. Let me tell you that. Amen, brother. Now listen, folks, it's not too late. Uh, get on the stick. Get get uh, get there. Get busy. Uh, all you got to do is go to hearthewatchmanmem.com. Today is the last day that the hotel will be offering the group discount rate. You need to be at this conference. So go get there. We have people coming from New Zealand. We have people from London. We have people from Canada. Uh, we have people from uh, Australia. They're coming. So don't tell me that you can't get to Long Island, New York, that it's a hassle to get there. Just get there. Save your life. Save the life of those that you love. Here, the Watchman, M-E-N.com. Tom, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. I'm going to be counting on a refill on this um, on this uh, uh, coffee here. <laughs> I'm uh, sure, Jeannie. Um, I'm, I'm almost sure. out. I can't find you last minute. But, uh, I'm, I'm sure Jeannie you know, will have some. God bless you guys. She, she'll have some toffee for you, Tom. I'm, I'm sure she can work that in. <laughs> okay. That's honest to goodness toffee, folks. Jeannie's toffee. It's amazing. Anyway, yeah. we'll see you all next time, Tom. We'll see you in about three weeks. God bless. Okay.